Yeah, so cause of today is a means and the immunotic disease of the newborn. RH incompatibility, ABO incompatibility, infection. Yes, we torch bacterial septis, sepsis is a common. We need to rule out the torch in the persistent zones after the 14 days in the term baby and after the 21 days in the preterm baby. Malaria, of course, very rare, but still is important because of today's as I mentioned, it is a G6PD deficiency. Appearing between 24 to 72 hours, for example, physiological sepsis, polycythemia. Yes, nowadays there is a practice of a delay code campaign after one minute. So, what happened mostly in the IUGR baby or preterm baby, the hemoglobin level gets increased, and which may lead to increased viscosity and uh, uh, hemolysis, which leads to the hyperbilirubinemia. Sometimes we need a partial action transfusion also because of polycythemia and phototherapy. Conceal hemorrhage. As, as I know, the syphilla hematoma is a real hemorrhage, but it is possible that a conceal hemorrhage somewhere may happen in the body and which may lead to the hemolysis and increase in jaundice. Intraventricular hemorrhage, very common in preterm, preterm baby. Uh, increased intrahepatic circulation, as you mentioned. So these are the common causes of the jaundice. And uh, the basic is that we need to identify the basic pathology, uh, pathophysiology uh, of jaundice and treat accordingly. Mostly is a physiological order, but need to differentiate from the pathological because each type of pathological jaundice, we need to offer a uh, different sort of treatment. Although photos therapy and uh, and uh, action transfusion may be common to someone, but still need different long-term approach. See, remember, direct bilirubin, if we have a direct bilirubin, your phototherapy is not that much useful. Next one. After 72 hours of age, sepsis, cephalo hematoma, neonatal hepatitis, extra hepatic biliary atresia, breast meat, jaundice, metabolic disorder. Yeah. Next one. Common causes in the physiological examination, physiological jaundice, blood group, Compatibility, G6 PD deficiency, bruising and cephal hematoma, intrauterine postal infection, torch infection, which we said a breast meat jaundice, which we are, I already mentioned it. Next one, approach to the jaundice baby. The, we need to look at the birth weight, gestational age, postnatal age. I think the most important we need to make is that the postnatal age into the hours, not in the day. Access the clinical conditions, sick looking or well looking. If the sick looking, it's a mostly pathological. Look for the evidence of the chronic terrors of deeply jaundice being born. Chronic terrors are the, see the chronic terrors means the deposition of the bilirubins in the basal ganglia, so which may lead to the poor neurological symptoms, dystonic uh, symptoms like a lethargy, poor fading, absent more octostone, sometimes seizure. So there's a risk factor. Next one. So what is a workup? So first of most important, what are the detailed perinatal history? Uh, history from the mother side regarding the uh, number of pregnancies, gestation age, mortal kidney delivery, like forceps, forceps risk to increase the risk of sickness, or this thing, vacuum, vacuum, and uh, cesarean, history of uh, antenatal care. Uh, if we are RH in compatibility, we need to ask about the time of the 28 week, whether they have given the whether they have given the and RH, uh, what is it, uh, NTD has given or not, or uh, an issue of thyroid, an issue of diabetes, an issue of any other blood group uh, uh, mismatch like ABO in compatibility, history of torch screening, history of vaccination in the antenatal care, or history of any fever during the pregnancy, and uh, need detailed physical examination from the head to toe. So the interest we can identify, but we need to rule out the metabolic interest, which may lead to hepatomegaly, spinomegaly, uh, eyes, people examination, which may lead to some sort of cat track or uh, some sort of CHD, uh, uh, heart disease, some neurological signs, uh, poor moro, absent of moro reflex, absent of activities, absent of other primary reflex, poor sucking. So this all detailed physical examination is necessary. We need to do work up also. Maybe we can do the uh, ultrasound to rule out the biliary or sometimes we need to do the 
little head of MRCP scan to rule out the ventilator cell because why it is important, I already told you. Next one. How to see the transcutaneous millimeter is nowadays increasing uses, but uh, there is uh, some limitation we need to keep it because what happened if you want to measure a transcutaneous millimeter, we need to check it on the skin, uh, on the skin, you know, upon the skin, on the chest, and that skin should not be exposed to the phototherapy because once you export the skin to the phototherapy, the thickness of the skin is increasing and we might not able to pursue the real level of the millimeter. So it is important for the screening purpose or uh, when you some little doubt with guide or are even a further work. So use a transcutaneous millimeter in the babies with gestational age of more than 35 weeks or more or postnatal age of 25, 24 hours. So it clearly mentioned where we can use it more than 35 near term and pre term baby with Whose gestational age is about 35, and we can use it after 24 hour life. If a transcutaneous bilirubinometer is not available, obviously we need to measure the serum trunk bilirubin, total bilirubin. If a transcutaneous bilirubin uh, measurement is more than 15, see the again I message screening if it is more than 15, obviously we need to check it via blood. Next one. This is a chart. See the bilirubin levels versus the hours of life, bilirubin level with the hours of life, and there are lots of uh, uh, infant births given. So basically we need to plot, uh, plot the bilirubin level against uh, uh, hours of life with the corrected gestational age and maternal and fetal risk factor. So which will give us idea about the further treatment, which is available in every standard textbook. Next one. Rationally, the white rationally is to the reduce the bilirubin level. First thing, uh, second thing, we need to uh, to need to reduce the bilirubin toxicity and uh, proper hydration, maintain the nutritional level, and uh, if any underlying pathology, we need to correct it. So, how we can reduce the level drug therapy? Obviously, they used to give off you know but now it is not. Uh, recommended accepting some uh, syndromic cases uh, what, I, what I can say I can say that, say that a clinical nasal syndrome one and two so in the cases but not uh, uh, not routinely so when is uh, maintained a hydration hydration means loss of breastfeeding and second is a phototherapy and third is exim transfusion and for the result, treat the supportive treatment and, and uh, if identified a pathology, try to correct it or prevent it on the next pregnancy. Next one. So the how the phototherapy works. Generally, the kids who are less than 14 days, the skin is somewhat transparent, somewhat uh, less thicker. So the ultraviolet rate of wavelength of the UV light of 450 to see 460. Pass through the skin and it breaks the bilirubin uh, into the insoluble to soluble and which is excreted, excreted into the urine or loose stool. So that's how on the on the principle of the therapy works. Next one. This is a phototherapy. See, remember the, the previous when you are offering phototherapy, you need to cover the eyes with the eye cover and need to cover the on the uh, private part area. See, so you can clearly send that uh, photo distance from the photo therapy from the kid uh, from the baby is nearly about one to one and a half foot. First thing, second thing, they there is a eye cover, third is the there is a diaper, and make sure you don't make him wear all these clothes while offering photo therapy. Otherwise, there will be no meaning of phototherapy. Okay. And although baby may be hungry frequently. So try to give him breastfeeding, but make sure okay, you, uh, you keep him under the phototherapy maximum time for the maximum effect. Other thing is that uh, when you are giving phototherapy, we need to check the flux of the blue light frequently because if the flux of the light is changed, then it might not be feasible for the phototherapy. Yeah.